you know, a survey that just came out today is of particular interest to our first guest here on Happy Hour. This is the survey. It was a, a telephone, telephone survey of the 2012 presidential election. And that survey found that President Obama has 42% of voter support and Representative Ron Paul, 41%. Wow. Ron Paul is our guest today on Happy Hour. So, Congressman, wow, first of all, congratulations. Welcome to Happy Hour. What about that 1%? What are you going to do about it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do you think that was an authentic poll? That's a bit of a surprise yes. to me. It, <laughs> it was, was a, bit a of surprise legitimate that they, poll. It was. It was a Rasmussen poll, Congressman. And, uh, yeah, it was a surprise even that they ran the poll. No, uh, I guess it's a pleasant surprise, but uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, since I'm not a candidate for anything except to get reelected to Congress, so uh, I guess I'll work on that. Well, Congressman, let's talk a little bit, though. You know, is there any chance that you would run in 2012? I talk about all the time that I wouldn't vote for a Republican or Democrat, but doggone it, if you ran, it would actually challenge that the premise of mine, and I'd love to see you <laughs> run as an independent for sure. Well, I haven't closed it out, but I haven't been very enthusiastic. I have no plans to do it. Uh, you know, that poll uh, indicates that, you know, the message of limited government is pervasive throughout the whole society and it is not a party thing. Uh, one of the biggest obstacles for somebody like myself to run on a limited government platform would be to get through the Republican primary because, uh, because <laughs> some so of them ironically. aren't for limited government. You know, I'm for limited government on personal matters and I'm for limiting our exposure overseas and those in, in our empire, you know, in 135 countries, 700 bases. And that doesn't mm -hmm. sell that well in the Republican primary. But I'm delighted to know that uh, a large number of Americans are starting to think this way. Well, you know, Congressman, what would it take to give um, President Obama a run for his money in the upcoming election? I, I, what, what really would have to be the strategy in running against him? Well, I'm not, I don't have any strategy because I don't have any plan. But one, one thing that I have said was that, uh, you, you know, I've talked a lot about the economy and the uh, breakdown of the financial system sort of verified the Austrian school of thought, and that is what I've been talking about. So I gained credibility there and gained exposure. Uh, I think the next shoe to fall will be a monetary crisis where the bond bubble will burst. We've had the NASDAQ bubble, we had the housing bubble, now we have a bond bubble. When the bond bubble bursts, what you have are higher interest rates and depreciation of the currency and inflation. We're not right there yet, but we have a potential. If we're in the midst of that and we're coming anywhere close to the need for monetary reform, it would be hard for me not to speak out on that issue. Amen. But I'd be more motivated by speaking out on the economic issues than seeking a, another, uh, another election victory. That, that would be secondary to trying to uh, come to our senses on monetary policy. Well, and something else that you're uh, comfortable speaking out about is, is the president. And we uh, found that uh, recently you had said in a speech that you referred to the president because a lot of people have been saying that he's a socialist because of all this government involvement in corporate America. But you came up with the term that we all really liked and, that, and was fascinated by. Uh, you said he's not a socialist, he's a corporatist. Explain that for our, few, for our viewers. Well, there's a little bit of semantics here and technicalities, and I was thinking in terms of economics. Uh, if you're a socialist, you take over everything, total ownership. And that isn't the goal. The American people wouldn't put up with it, but the American people seem to tolerate uh, a lot of regulations and uh, a lot of partnership. Uh, you can have a military industrial complex and, and that, that industry benefits from the taxpayers and, and all the appropriations. But now we have a medical industrial complex yeah. where we have corporations, we have the drug companies and the management companies, the insurance companies and the law firms and they, they all love this system. So the corporations benefit from this and uh, Corporatism or a corporatist uh, indicates that, but the danger there is it does lead to socialism. It's happened before right. in history, and it's a, it's a national socialist system that they have then, and uh, it comes closer to sort of economic fascism rather than uh, the old line uh, socialism. But either way, it's very dangerous because it undermines liberty and it destroys the productive capacity of a free market. Well, Representative, you know, I would push it even further and say we've got a financial industrial complex, we've got a retail industrial complex. You name the sector of the economy and they have a lobbying body that, is, that now owns the Republican-Democrat regime in power. 
Congressman, we're just about out of time. Give us some hope here. How do we turn this around? How do we turn? How do, how do we save this great country and make Dan Gross look good? That America is I'm truly always, back, man. I'm always amazed that when I finish my talks on the college campuses, the, the young people come away with a sense of optimism. And I come away with a sense of optimism, too, not on the short run, because this has to uh, be, be uh, you know, the debt has to be liquidated. We have to go back to starting all over again. But the young people of this country are very much attuned to what I'm talking about. They know the seriousness of the problem, and they're getting involved. And I think our fight is intellectual, and it has mm -hmm. to do with whether you'll accept free market economics and reject what we've all been taught for so long, the Keynesian approach to economics and socialism. And when they reject that, and I think the young people will, so I'm optimistic on the long run. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't have to be a member of the Tea Party to realize that you want li limited government and reduced government spending. Congressman Ron Paul, we thank you very much, as always, for joining us on Happy Hour. I think I love them. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Lots of